So I'm sure you've all seen the news that Ferrari team principal Mattia Bonotto has been sacked after a four year stint from 2019 to 2022 as team boss. It comes after a disappointing 2022 season where Ferrari had the ability to genuinely challenge for the championship. But due to strategic errors, unreliability and poor development throughout the season, they failed to win the title. And well, it continues the trend of the revolving door leadership at Ferrari where they've struggled to find a reliable team principal to take them back to the glory of the early 2000s. Now, the search begins for a replacement for a job that doesn't really seem all that attractive at the moment. So, Mattia Bonotto has actually been at Ferrari for much longer than people think. He joined the team straight out of education 27 years ago in 1995 with the engine department of the team. And after 18 years, he got the role of head of engine department then role of technical director in 2016, and finally became team principal on the 7th of January 2019. When he came in, his main aim was to rid the team of their toxic blame culture that has always held them back. And during his tenure, he also overhauled their dated wind tunnel, signed off on the most advanced simulator in F1, and achieved massive progress in engine development after that awful 2020 season. Well, let's look back season by season to see how much he achieved along the way. His first season in 2019 was a solid start, finishing second in the standings with three wins, 19 podiums and nine pole positions. It was a year of two halves, however, with the incredible win in Monza, but also the controversy of the legality of Ferrari's engine. And well, following a private settlement, Ferrari's engine took a serious hit and the team endured their worst season in 40 years in 2020 finishing sixth in the standings with zero wins, three podiums, and zero pole positions. But under Minotto's leadership, they did bounce back pretty well in 2021, finishing third, albeit with no wins. But it showed some very impressive improvement from the awful 2020 season. And then into 2022, Ferrari were back in the position to fight for a championship. But due to reliability and strategy mistakes, they only managed second in the championship, with four wins, 20 podiums, and 12 pole positions, but making it Bonotto's most successful season ever. Now, I mentioned the whole revolving door leadership at Ferrari, so why don't we look back at all the team principals in the last 30 years and compare how Bonotto has done? Well, there have been four other team principals in that time, with Maurizio Riva Bene, Marco Mattiacci, Stefano Domenicali, and John Todd. Well, I thought looking at their wins to races ratio would be the best measure. So, Bonotto has won 11 and a half of all races he has entered with seven wins in 61 races. Now, comparing this to his predecessors, you can see why he got the sack. Apart from Marco Mattiacci, who was an utter failure with a win rate of 0%, he got beaten by Arriva Bene with 17.3%, Domenicali with 17.4%, and Jean Todd with a huge 39.4%. So basically, you can understand why Bonotto ended up getting the boot in search for someone new to emulate the great Jean Todd. So those are the numbers that represent why Bonotto hasn't quite worked out with Ferrari. But what are the underlying reasons? Well, there are a few to consider. Firstly, Bonotto is a technical genius. He is an incredibly talented engineer but sometimes putting an engineer into a leadership position doesn't really work because when leading, it is arguably more important to be able to manage people and have those interpersonal skills. And well, it's pretty clear he's lacking in that area, which is why in 2022, Ferrari built a very quick and impressive car to fight for the title, but ended up losing it because of poor strategy calls and inter-team issues. This terrible quality of communication and culture has been a characteristic of Bonotto's leadership since he became team boss four years ago. So moving forward, Ferrari needs to find someone who is skilled more in management of people than the technical side. Just look at Red Bull and Mercedes. Every championship won for the last 13 years has been a team run by either Christian Horner or Toto Wolff, who know very little about the technical side, but are experts in people management. But in fairness, the issues at Ferrari stretch much further than just Mattia Bonotto. Why Ferrari is struggling so much is partly because their team lacks diversity. Toto Wolff said himself that he doesn't think Mercedes would have won as much as they did if their team wasn't incredibly diverse. While Ferrari is of course Italian, and so you would expect the majority of people working there to be Italian, 
having a range of people from different countries and different backgrounds allows for diversity of opinion and perspective. It allows the team to constantly think in new innovative ways thanks to this wide range in opinion, and that is something that Ferrari considerably lack. All they need to do is look into the past when they are on top of the world. Known as the Dream Team, the Ferrari leadership included team principal Jean Todd, who was French, technical director Ross Braun, who was English, chief designer Rory Byrne, who was Irish, and the drivers Michael Schumacher and Rubens Barrichello, who were German and Brazilian. This diversity in leadership, as well as in the lower ranks in the team, took Ferrari to six consecutive Constructors' Championships. Once they start to make the team more diverse, then not only should they start to be consistently successful, but the toxic blame culture in the team should disappear as well. So Bonotto is heading out, but who is heading in? Well, Ferrari have said they are looking for a replacement to come in for the new year, so they've got around a month to bring in someone new. But who are the guys most likely to replace Bonotto? Well, there are three front runners, and firstly, there's current Alfa Romeo team principal, Fred Vasseur. In my opinion, he would definitely be the best choice for Ferrari. He took over Alfa Romeo, then called Sauber, in 2017 when they finished last in the championship on only 5 points, having been a backmarker team since arguably 2013. And in the 6 years he's been in charge, he's taken them to 6th in the championship with 55 points, which is a huge achievement. Vasseur is also a brilliant man-manager, which as I discussed earlier, is exactly what Ferrari need. On top of that, he is very close with Charles Leclerc, having led him to his GP3 title in 2016 and helped him in his first F1 season in 2018. So if Ferrari wants to keep Leclerc for the long term, bringing in Vasseur will massively help that. The next candidate is McLaren team principal Andreas Seidel, who since arriving at McLaren in 2019 has taken them back to podiums and has given them their first win since 2012. Seidel is a no-nonsense kind of person who is brilliant at protecting the team externally while ensuring internal performance is the best it can be. And when it comes to Ferrari, there is no other team on the grid with as much external noise, so that will be extremely valuable. The final candidate shocked me, but it does make sense in many ways, and that is to bring back Ross Braun, who used to be the Ferrari technical director between 1996 and 2006. As mentioned before, he was part of the dream team that took Ferrari to six straight constructors' titles. He also was Mercedes team principal from 2010 to 2013 and was responsible for putting the foundations in place for their dominance in the years after he left. But most recently, he's been the managing director of Formula One from 2017 to 2022, so he would bring serious experience and connections. So after 2014, Ferrari have never had a truly reliable and solid team principal that Ferrari have trusted, and with Bonotto out now as well, it seems like much of the same. However, I do believe someone like Vasseur would be a brilliant fit for the reasons I explained earlier. But the high pressure environment of Ferrari is a whole nother kettle of fish, so he'll need to be able to manage these huge expectations. If all Ferrari want is security, then I would say Ross Braun is the right choice, as he won't be afraid to impose himself, and you know he won't be told what to do by the Ferrari bosses. Anyways, the decision is to be made by the start of the new year, and I'm really excited to see who they go with.